This review was made possible by the Yojo Outlet Center, specializing in vintage G.I. Joe toys and parts. Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you on our 1980s and 90s G.I. Joe toy review. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the Cobra Mountain Trooper, the 1990 Rock Viper. Now, the Rock Viper doesn't make any comic book appearances, at least not in the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe, but he makes his first cartoon appearance in the Deke animated episode, General Confusion. He is also a enemy mob in the 1990 G.I. Joe NES video game. Taking a look at the Rock Viper's accessories first, he comes with what the contents list on the card calls a pistol. I know it's not terribly uh, descriptive. And I wish it was because I don't believe that this is supposed to be a firearm. Especially with the um, magazine sticking straight up through the line of sight in this tiny little uh, stock at the back here. I mean obviously you could pretend that it's some type of uh, laser gun or something like that. But I believe that this was supposed to be a Piton loop launcher. Something that you press up against the side of a mountain face and just use like a, a nail gun, sort of. So that you can use the expel pitons just to loop your rope around. Next, he comes with a very large rifle. Again, the contents list on the card are not really that descriptive. But this thing is a dead ringer for the Heckler & Koch PSG-1 sniper rifle, which is really cool. Of course, I don't believe the sniper rifle ever came with a drum magazine, but that just makes this even cooler in my opinion. You'll notice that it has a really big knob here, and that is to attach to the back of his backpack right down there. There's a hole there. So he can be hands-free. You can just pop it on there and put it on in any direction that you want, actually. It doesn't have to be diagonal. It could be straight. If the Rock Viper's unique rifle looks familiar to you, but you don't remember having a Rock Viper, it's actually possible that you had the 1992 Iceberg Mail-Away figure, which for some strange reason didn't come with his retail M60, but came with the Rock Viper's rifle instead. He comes with a hose, which is attached to the back of his head and to the top of the backpack. It's not actually explained what this is. I mean, obviously, it's some type of a targeting relay device to his helmet, but it would have been nice if there was some type of uh, explanation for that on the file card. Because the file card is actually uh, rather detailed with his equipment. And, of course, the backpack itself which has some molded-in rockets. Now these are missiles. They're specifically mentioned as a missile launching backpack. So he does kind of, I guess, bend over like this to, to launch these things over his shoulder, or over his head, or something like that. And we have a removable hook. This grappling hook looks a lot like um, the 1985 Alpine hook, but it is, in fact, different. And, of course, it comes with a long line of standard G.I. Joe rope here, this sort of cottony rope, which they always seem to use for this type of thing. And this thing is rather long. It's Generally speaking, the rope's for this type of thing are usually around 12 to 16 inches long. So you do have quite a big leeway for that. And of course there's a tiny little spool that you can uh, tie this to. When he's holding his other two accessories and you're wondering what to do with his little pistol, well I found that you can actually put this thing right in the top portion here. But you do have to kind of put it in and slide it in here. This so it kind of uh, locks into place. It's kind of loose, but if you're not moving the figure around, it still stays in there quite well. 
I think the Rock Viper is one of those figures that actually has a very practical design to them, but they've made it rather interesting and unique. I especially love the color scheme. The sort of tan and black actually goes very well with its accessories and is fairly subdued as well. Now, in some photos, the I guess the brown does kind of look like it's maroon, which is kind of strange, but this is a sort of I guess the reddish hue of brown, which he has on him. So again, that's actually fairly practical. And yet, he still has the design of clearly a cobra with this weird angular helmet. On the card art, it's much more triangular than it is on the actual figure. And thank goodness for that. He has nice little sculpted in bullets pouches all over him. And again, I love the, the sort of angular digital camo that they tried to do in the early years. Of course, they couldn't quite get it um, quite as small and as detailed as actual digital camo is, but it's nice that they actually tried to put the effort in. He also has spare rockets molded onto his leg. Which again is something that I really do appreciate. The rest of the rockets are molded onto his backpack here. And again, the people who sculpted the accessories are not necessarily the same people who sculpted the figure. So it's really nice when they match up like this. And again, he has a lot of padding like knee pads and something to protect his shin. As well as stuff which is over his uh, forearm as well. One very interesting paint detail, though, is his mustache and little soul patch. Well, personally, I think that's a really cool detail. It's really odd that they put this on a rock viper, as these guys are meant to be generic troopers. So their faces should actually be as plain as possible, and not really as unique as that. If you don't want to use him as a mountain trooper, he actually makes a very good desert trooper. It wouldn't be until 1991 before we got the Desert Scorpion, Cobra's first dedicated Desert Trooper. So this guy makes a really nice stand-in, or if you can't get the Desert Scorpion, he makes a good uh, troop builder. And as you can see, he comes with two tan accessories, which kind of emphasize the whole uh, beige and tan color scheme that most Desert Troopers have. You can also see just how big his rifle is. The PSG-1 is actually a very large rifle, obviously being um, a sniper rifle. And he's actually holding onto the knob here. So that's another thing that you can do. You can have him kind of standing to attention holding the knob rather than the buttstock or the grip. So who would the Rock Viper's opposite number on the G.I. Joe team be? Well, it's quite obvious to compare him to the 1985 Alpine, who is the G.I. Joe's first mountain trooper. But as 1985 is quite a few years away from 1990, as, as far as you know, toys on the shelf being, I think his closest rival should actually be the 1988 Hit and Run, who, while he was a light infantryman, he did have mountaineering experience. And I believe that these two actually make a very good contrast, especially with all of his very light colors and him being very dark. The Rock Viper is classified as Cobra's very first dedicated mountain trooper, but I still want to compare him to the 1989 Alley Viper. Now granted, the Alley Viper is an urban expert, and as a mountain trooper, the Rock Viper would be closer to more like a wilderness um, expert, but the Alley Viper does come with a grapp grappling hook, a grappling line launcher, and rope molded onto his backpack. So while it's not really a usable feature of the figure, it still suggested that he knows mountaineering, albeit he uses that expertise to scale buildings and things like that. Still, in 1987, any Cobra Trooper could be a mountain climber, with the addition of the right equipment, such as the Cobra Action Pack Mountain Climber. Uh, that's this thing here. So any Cobra Trooper could be a mountain climber, let's say Croc Master, who has no business being on a mountain, but still, with this 
mountain climber backpack, he can do just that. The Rock Viper is a fairly easy figure to find on the aftermarket. Really the only thing that you have to worry about is whether or not he comes with the uh, grappling hook and the rope. And you do have to make sure that he still has the little knob at the back of his head to plug in the tiny one and a half to two inch little hose that he comes with. Uh, some people really don't really bother with this. Quite frankly, I don't either. It actually kind of limits the way his head moves because the attachment is just so close to the back of his head to where the top of the backpack is. As you can see, his rifle is really, really large. The actual PA and uh, these mountain and uh, these motorized backpacks. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind-the-scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.